Hey guys, it's Bree. Um, I have only read one book this week and I don't know what I'm going to read next. Um, so I, I thought I would just kind of do a review instead of The Little Green Book of Chairman Rama by Brian Herbert. If you don't know, Brian Herbert is the son of Frank Herbert and he is responsible for a lot of the extended Dune universe. Um, he's known mostly for that, though he's written some stuff as side projects, and he's also written his father's biography. This is an advanced reader's copy that I got sent from Tor by a giveaway. Um, and it sounds intriguing. It's a book about a world where kind of environmentalist movements have taken over and have started to turn the United States into kind of a green paradise. Um, but it's also very totalitarian. Um, there are a lot of very strict rules and very harsh punishments for breaking the rules. It follows a guy, Joss, who is a, he works on a green former, which is where they, they tear apart buildings and they replant plants that would be natural to that particular habitat. <clears throat> it also follows um, the chairman, Chairman Rama, who is like the, the leader of, they've, they've renamed it the Green States of America. I didn't like this book. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and start off just by saying it. I didn't like the way that Herbert develops his characters. They're very flat throughout the entire thing. Um, a lot of the territory that he treads when he's telling us about them the first time, he then brings up repeatedly throughout the rest of the book as though we forget it, um, or we would forget the character's motivation. Um, he does that with a lot of different descriptions, too, of, like, just events that happen. He'll be like, this particular event, which had this effect, and then, you know, when he brings it up later, he'll say it again, like, this event, which had this effect, and it's like, I, I remember. You told me, and I remember. Um, this book is set in 2061, and he talks about the Green Revolution taking down corporations that he names, corporations like Microsoft. Um, and I just had a, I really struggled with this book because I had a hard time imagining a United States 20 years from now, um, which is when the revolution take, takes place. You know, it's hard to imagine the United States 20 years from now deciding to suddenly overthrow major corporations, especially considering that in the past five years or so, there have been a lot of corporate movements to become more green and, and to, you know, take environmentalism into account more. And he doesn't do a good job of setting up what is so different. Um, Another thing that I, I really struggled with is that, you know, again, it's it's a book that takes place roughly 40 years from now. He doesn't explain why we have magic machines that allow us to turn plants and people into goo, um, or what kind of technological revolution had led to that. And these aren't things that I, I would be complaining about if it were set, you know, four or five hundred years in the future, you know, because who knows what happens then. But when you're you're setting your your book in kind of the foreseeable future, I think you really need to make a point of explaining how we get from A to B if B is not directly, you know, where we probably will be. Like you need to you need to make those connections for me as a reader. I think this book really would have benefited from like a 30 page prologue or something that would have just explained the technological development and the kind of social development that led to the revolution. And it doesn't have that. In fairness, this is an arc. It might be in the actual hardback, but without it, it just it's very it's very sparse. Um, the pacing in this book is really, really, really slow. It's not a character-driven book, and it's not a plot-driven book. It's just kind of, like, the story kind of sits there for about a, 260 pages. There's a lot of action in the last 40, but it feels very forced because there isn't actually a lot of build-up, despite having, you know, 350 pages before that. 
it's like everything that should have been dis, you know, developed and really kind of would have been interesting is shoved into those last 40 pages and it's so rushed and there's no detail. You know, there are characters that are introduced and that are supposed to have these impactful deaths, but you, you only spent 20 pages with them. You don't have that kind of emotional connection yet. And I just, I was really disappointed. Um, I do know that Herbert, Brian Herbert, at the very least, is a pretty controversial figure. He's done a lot of stuff with the Dune series that a lot of people who like the six, the first six books that Frank Herbert wrote don't really like what Brian Herbert um, kind of did to the extended universe. Um, I don't know if if that's true. I haven't read the extended Dune universe, but I'm not particularly hopeful for it after having read this book. Um, if I were to give it a star rating on Goodreads, it would probably be two out of five stars. Um, you know, it just, it was not particularly impressive and it really, I mean, it took me, it's 400 pages and it took me an entire week to read it. You know, for a science fiction and fantasy book, that would normally take me two or three days. Um, and right now I have a lot of downtime. It's my off season, so I'm home most of the day. You know, I don't have TV. All I do is sit and read and it took me a week, you know. Um, so I just, I wasn't thrilled. I was going to read Guy Gabriel Kay's River of Stars next, but I think I just want something literary, something like just totally different from science fiction and fantasy to kind of disassociate how I'm feeling from this book, from how I'm going to feel about other books that are coming up. Um, I have picked up A Tale for the Time Being. That's probably what I'm going to read next. Um, that's by Ruth Ezeki, so... I will see you guys later. I know this wasn't terribly <laughs> thrilling, um, but I will, I will talk to you guys later in the week. Bye.